and Doug were on their way to the tractor factory with a delivery. I've never been to a tractor factory before, said Dig. Oh, well, I'll show you around then, said Doug. When they arrived, Eric's truck was in the way, and he wasn't around to move it. I wonder where he is, said Doug. Let's have a look inside. Knock, knock, said Doug. Anyone at home? shouted Dig. Hello? Hello? And just as they went inside... Hello? Mr Packett, the manager, came to see who it was. Hello? He said. Funny. Must be hearing things. Hello? Hello? Said Dig and Doug, thinking they'd heard someone. Let's try through here. And as they went through the other door, Mr Packett was sure that someone was outside calling. Hello? He said. And just as he was about to disappear again... Hello? Hello? Said Dig and Doug. I thought I heard voices, said Mr. Packett. Now what can I do for you? And Doug explained that they were looking for Eric because his crane lorry was in the way. Mm, said Mr. Packett. If only I could work the crane myself, we could unload your truck then. Suddenly, Doug had an idea. Oh, silly old me. I can work a crane. Of course I can work a crane. Leave it to me, he said. And before Mr. Packet could say anything, Doug was ready to start. I'm ready to start, he shouted. Are you sure you're not? What you're doing, Doug? said Mr. Packet. Oh, yes. Doug knows what he's doing, all right, said Dig. I'll just pull this one, and just push that one. Quite safe with Doug, we are. And before long, Doug had worked out what all the levers did and was unloading the truck. Don't look much like boxes, do they? Ah, that's because they are flat, Mr. Packet. Makes them easier to carry that way. So, how many is that then, Dig? he said, as the last bundle was unloaded. Should be twenty-two, Mr. Packet. Correct, said Mr. Packet. How many is that then? said Doug. Twenty-two, they both said. Brilliant. That's the same number that we set out with this morning. Mr. Packet pressed the button to open the delivery bay door. This is the pack and dispatch room in here, said Mr. Packet. Would you like to see what your boxes are for? Dig and Doug both said they would, so he showed them. You lift the bundle, put it on the catch, press the button, and it goes through the hatch. Dig and Doug were very impressed, especially when a long line of boxes came out through another door. All packed up and ready to go, said Mr. Packet proudly. Like birthday presents, said Dig. Or Christmas presents, said Doug. Mr. Packet said he was off to find Eric, the lorry driver. 
Would you like us to carry on loading, Mr. Packet? asked Dig. Ooh, do you think you can? he asked. Piece of cake, eh, Dig? said Doug. Piece of cake, Doug, said Dig. Right, what did he say, Doug? said Dig. Lift the button and press the bundle. No, 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 that's not right. Lift the bundle and press the button. Yes, that's it. Press the button. All right, if I press the button, Dig? No! Right. And instead of hooking up the boxes... Ah! Dig hooked himself up. Doug, help me! He shouted as he disappeared through the little door. Don't worry, said Doug. I'm right behind you. I said I was going to show you around, didn't I? And before long, Dig was back again and managed to wriggle free. <laughs> but poor old Doug was stuck now. Dig! Help me! I'm stuck and I can't get up! Don't worry! shouted Dig. I'm right behind you! And as they both disappeared again, Mr. Packet came back. Uh, I can't find Eric anywhere. Dig? Duck? Oh, taking a break, I expect. So he decided to load the bundles himself. Hello, Mr. Packet, said Daisy. I saw Dig and Uncle Doug's truck outside. Are they here? Mr. Packet told her they'd be back soon. So Daisy said she'd like to help him pile the boxes. Oh, well, you'd better wear my hat then, he said. Right, said Daisy. Let's get packing, Mr. Packet. Very strange, he said. These boxes are ever so heavy. Ah! Daisy and Mr. Packet could ah! hardly believe their ah! eyes. Ah! Look out, Doug! Look out, Mr. Packet! Yeah, Here he comes again. Yeah, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Mind my toe! Ah! Mind your backs, gents! Oh. Ah. Eventually, ah. when Daisy and Mr. Packet realized who it was, and everyone had decided it was time to go home, Daisy came up with a problem. What's wrong? said the others. Mr. Packet still hasn't found Eric, she said. And just as they were about to start looking, one last box came through the door. Evening all, said the parcel. Eric, where on earth have you been? Just hanging around at the back, he said. <laughs> Dig and Doug in a little yellow truck are Daisy's favourite friends. Driving here and driving there to fetch and fix and mend. Watch them work together, helping out in style. Always at the ready with a spanner and a smile They're Dick and Doug and Daisy to bring a smile to you Daisy may be somewhere near thinking up a plan Wondering how to help them out and lend a friendly hand They're Dick and Doug and Daisy to bring a smile to you
Dig and Doug had received an emergency call from Mr. Packet. It's Oswald, said Doug. He's in charge of making the tractors at the factory. And Mr. Packet says he's out of control. What do you mean, out of control? asked Dick. We'll find out when we get there, said Doug. And they hurried on their way. Oswald, behave yourself. Oswald! Hello, Mr. Packet. We're here. Mr. Packet was so pleased to see them. I'm so pleased to see you, he said. Oswald's worse than ever, and I don't know what to do. Have you said anything to upset him? asked Doug. Mr. Packet said he hadn't. Has anyone been calling him names? Mr. Packet said they hadn't done that either. Right, said Doug. Let's take a look at him then. Stand back, Mr. Packet. This is a job for experts, isn't it, Doug? said Dick. It is, Dick, said Doug. Come on, Oswald. Be good now. Let go of the door. Stop it, Oswald. Oh! Mr. Packet was right. Oswald was obviously unwell. He's very unwell, Mr. Packet, said Doug. What are we going to do? Doug said that someone would have to go in. The question was, who? Well, I'm the oldest, said Doug, so I can't go. And I've got a birthday next week, said Mr. Packet, so I can't go. And as Dick couldn't think of anything, it was decided that he should go. So Doug and Mr. Packet wished him luck. Good luck, they both said, and in he went. Have you found him? said Doug. Yes, I found him. All right. How does he look? they asked. Not very well, said Dick. Pull his plug out, shouted Mr. Packet. Pull his what out? His plug, shouted Doug and Mr. Packet. Right, said Dick. And suddenly, everything went very quiet. It's gone very quiet, said Doug. Do you think he's all right? Oh, yes, said Mr. Packet. Oswald's a tough old thing. I didn't mean Oswald. It's our dig I'm worried about. Press the button and open the door. So he did. Oh, all clear, said Dig. I don't think he'll give you any more trouble. Mr. Packet took a look at Oswald. They can make five tractors a day, these robots, he said. Can they really? said Dig. Well, I never, said Doug. Have you ever mended one before? Doug laughed. <laughs> Have we ever mended a robot before? Oh, <laughs> dear, oh, dear. You go and have your lunch, Mr. Packet, and we'll have young Oswald back on his feet in no time. So, while Mr. Packet left them to it, and Dig went to fetch the tools, Doug began to examine Oswald. Well, they seem to be working all right. Nothing wrong with his feet, neither. Oh! What was that? When Dig arrived with the toolbox, he and Doug started to look at Oswald's insides. Screwdriver! shouted Doug. That's not a screwdriver, it's a hammer! Spanner! shouted Dig. That's not a spanner, it's a saw! And as Dig and Doug realised what was happening, Oswald did something very stupid. That was stupid! He's eaten all our screws, Doug. I know he has. Now you listen to me, young Oswald. If you don't start behaving yourself, you'll be in big trouble. And if you don't let us mend you, said Dick, we'll be in big trouble as well. I don't think he's very happy, Doug, said Dick. He's not. You're right, Dick. You're not happy, Oswald, are you? said Doug. 
Then Dig had an idea. It's the screwdriver, Doug. You're afraid of the screwdriver, aren't you, Oswald? Right, said Doug. Well, it won't hurt, I promise. Now then, let's see. And very carefully, and very gently, Doug started to fiddle with Oswald's insides. <laughs> He's ticklish, Doug, said Dig. Sorry, Oswald, said Doug. I shall be long, and then you'll be ship-shape and ready to go again. Ship-shape, that's right, said Doug. And they stood back to see if Oswald was any better. The robot rushed about, gathering the bits to make a tractor with. And for a while, it looked as though he'd been mended. But when he'd finished, he hadn't made a tractor at all. Uh, looks more like a ship to me, said Dig. Looks more like a ship to me, said Doug. And they were right. It was a ship. What made him do that then? said Dig. No idea, said Doug. You have a go. See if you can do any better. So Dig did. You've tickled him again, Dig, said Doug. Sorry, Oswald. I shan't be long, and then you'll be off like a rocket. Rocket, 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 rocket. Rocket, that's right, said Dig. And they stood back to see if Oswald was any better. And once again, the robot rushed about, gathering the bits to make a tractor with. And for a while, it looked as though he really was mended. But when he'd finished, he hadn't made a tractor at all. Looks more like a rocket to me, said Doug. Looks more like a rocket to me, said Dig. Suddenly, Daisy arrived. Hi, Dig. Hi, Uncle Doug. Oh, you are clever. You've made a rocket. And when Doug explained how upset Oswald had been, and how worried Mr. Packet had become, and how every time anyone told Oswald to make a tractor, he made something else, Daisy came up with a plan. Perhaps he'd like to be asked, she said. What do you mean? said Dig. Well, she continued, Instead of telling Oswald to make a tractor, perhaps you should ask him. Hmm. So Doug did. Oswald, he said, would you make a tractor? Try saying please, whispered Daisy. <clears throat> Oswald, will you please make a tractor? asked Doug. And Oswald did. Well done, Oswald! Hooray for Oswald! Beautiful! What a beautiful tractor! And no sooner had he finished than Mr. Packet returned. Well done, Doug. Congratulations, Dig. You all deserve some lunch. Lunch, that's right, everyone said. So Oswald had another box of screws.
Mr. Packet was very excited. Today was the day his new office was arriving. Oh, I hope they are careful, he said, and wondered how much longer he'd have to wait. Dig and Doug were carrying it on the back of their truck. At least, they thought they were. Suddenly, Farmer Stubble appeared. Hello? What's this? he said. Perhaps it's a cow shed. Let's have a look inside. Hello? Anyone at home? Back at the factory, Mr. Packet was getting very worried. Oh, they should have been here by now, he said. I hope it hasn't fallen off or anything. A good job you tied it on nice and tight, Doug, said Dig. Otherwise, it would have fallen off. It would, Dig, said Doug. Except I didn't tie it on nice and tight. You tied it on nice and tight. No, I didn't, Doug, said Dig. You tied it on nice and tight. Uh oh Although Mr. Packet's office was still in the lane, something about it was very different. Thank goodness it's still here, said Doug. What did you think it would do? Go for a walk? <laughs> Never mind the jokes. Let's get it on the truck before Mr. Packet starts wondering where we are. It's fallen off. I know it has. It's fallen off, smashed to pieces, and I'll never find another one like it again. Poor Mr. Packet. He was more than wondering where they were. He was about to burst into tears. Phew! Seems heavier than before, Doug, said Dig. Give us a lift up, Dig. Where? Oh, 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 oh. Whoa! Ready? Catch! Here. Yeah. Can you hear a funny noise? Farmer Stubble's pigs, I expect, said Doug. Come on, let's get the office tied on properly this time. My new office. My lovely new office. Poor Mr. Packet. And just when he'd given up all hope... Hello, Mr. Packet. We're here. Mr. Packet was so pleased to see them. Oh, he said, I'm so pleased to see you. I thought something terrible had happened. I thought it hadn't been tied on properly and had fallen off. <laughs> they both laughed, and just as they were about to tell him what had happened, Mr. Packet was in the crane truck and ready to unload. You hook it on, Dig, and I'll lift it off. Right, said Dig. Ready, Doug? Ready, Dig. Lift away then, Mr. Packet. So he pulled the levers to lift the office from the back of the truck. Hold on, Dig. Right out, Doug. That's it, Dig. And Dig and the office landed safely on the ground. That's it. She's down now, Mr. Packet. Suddenly, they heard the strange sound again. Sounds like my office is snoring, said Mr. Packet. It does, said Doug. Mind you, said Dig, it has been a long journey, so it must be quite sleepy. Oh, that's a comfy cow shed, said Farmer Stubble. Oh, my word! Look at the time. Must have dozed off. About ready for my tea, I am. Oh, Tuesday. Donuts. Lovely. Boy, Dig. Boy, Doug. Dig and Doug were very surprised to see him. But before they could say anything, Right, he said. I'll park this round the back and see you later.
Let's push it into place, said Doug. Right, said Dig. So they did. Ooh! Ooh. Ah! You're pushing the wrong way, said Doug. Come round this side. Right, said Dig. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. There we are, said Dig. Fits like a glove. Beautiful, said Doug. Hold on, where's the door? Up there, on the roof. Right, said Doug. Push it on its side then. Right, said Dig. So they did. How's that? said Dig. Beautiful, said Doug. Hold on, where's the window? Up there, on the roof. Right, said Doug. Push it on its side then. Right, said Dig. So they did. But it still wasn't quite right. It's still not quite right, Dig, said Doug. It's not Doug, said Dig. So they decided to take a look inside. There's the window, look! And there's the roof of the wall. Exactly. So where are we then? And while they tried to work it out, Daisy arrived. Uncle Doug, she said. Hello, Daisy, said Dig. Having a bit of trouble with this office, said Doug. And when he explained how it all started with a little accident in the lane, and how Farmer Stubble had appeared from nowhere, and how dangerous it had been lifting the office onto the ground, and now that they had, they couldn't get it the right way up, Daisy came up with a plan. When you're ready, Dig, lean on it as hard as you can. Right, said Dig. That's it, shouted Daisy. Now lower it onto the ground, Uncle Doug. Right, said Dig. That's it, shouted Daisy. Now bring it forward, Uncle Doug. Right, he shouted. That's it! And before long, Mr. Packett's office was almost in place. A bit more! A little bit more! That's it! Now, drop it down! That's perfect, said Daisy. That's perfect, said Mr. Packett, back from parking the truck. Aren't they clever to have done it so quickly? Very, said Daisy. After you, Mr. Packet, said Doug. Welcome to your new office, said Dig. Oh, thank you very much, said Mr. Packet. Daisy were on their way to a special occasion. 
Um, is it someone's birthday? asked Daisy. The mayoress said it wasn't. Um, is somebody getting married? The mayoress said it wasn't that either. And just as she was about to tell Daisy what it was, her car started making a funny noise. At the tractor factory, everyone was busy cleaning and polishing. Even Oswald, the robot, had been scrubbed and oiled. Dick and Doug knew it was a special occasion, but they couldn't remember why. It's not someone's birthday, is it? asked Dick. They all said it wasn't. Is someone getting married? asked Doug. No, it wasn't that either. Suddenly, Mr Packett arrived with a very important announcement. Could I have your attention, please? This is a very important announcement. Today is the day when we finish making our 100th tractor, he said. And what's more, Mr. Packet continued, the mayoress is coming to help us celebrate. Everyone was delighted especially Oswald, who hurried off to start painting the 100th tractor. Suddenly, the telephone rang. Ah, that will be for me, most likely. Doug speaking. How can I be of assistance? No, he said, looking very serious. When? Where? Right. We'll be right there. Everyone waited for Doug to tell them what had happened. But all he said was, Whatever happens, don't panic. Come on, Dig, we haven't much time. What's it all about, Doug? The mayoress has broken down. He said. Dig thought for a minute. We've never mended a mayoress before, he said. Have we got the right tools? Her car's broken down, silly, said Doug. And if we don't fix it and get her to the factory, there'll be no party. Right, said Dig. Let's get a move on. It's the kingpin flanges on the drive shaft. Don't worry, said Daisy. Dig and Uncle Doug will arrive soon and have it fixed in no time. Hello, Mayoress. We are here. Oh, thank goodness, she said. The kingpin flanges on the drive shaft have gone. Hi, Dig. Hi, Uncle Doug. I knew you wouldn't let us down. And when she had explained how it all began with them driving along, and hearing a funny noise, and how the mayoress had thought she knew what was wrong, and almost got stuck in the engine, Dig and Doug came up with a plan. But I'm sure that's what it is, said the mayoress. The kingpin flanges on the drive shaft have gone. Now don't you worry, mayoress. Whatever it is, we'll fix it. Come along, Dig. Let's get started. So they did. Rocker cover. Rocker cover. Gasket. Gasket. Thing of me bolts. Thing of me bolts. What do you call it? What do you call it? Who'd you flip? Who'd you flip? The whole engine was out on the road. What do you reckon it is then, Doug? said Dig. It's just as I thought, Dig, said Doug. The kingpin flanges on the drive shaft have gone. And what are you going to do about that, Mr. Doug? Take you there in the truck, Mayoress. Hop in. You can sit in the front with me if you like. 
Daisy and Dig sat in the back and held on tight. On the way, Doug decided to cheer the mares up with some of the exciting adventures that he and Dig had been on. Like the time when Mrs. Stubble took the tractor for a ride. Or when Farmer Stubble appeared in a pile of turnips. Or the time when Dig and Doug found themselves on top of a building. And how Doug rescued Dig from the cement. How dangerous it was being night watchman. And how sad it was when their caravan got squashed. And the time they got carried away in the factory. And how Oswald the robot had stopped working. The mayoress so enjoyed hearing the stories, she forgot all about her broken down car and suddenly found herself at the factory. Hello, Mr. Packett. We're here. Mr. Packett was delighted and so was everyone else. Hello, mayoress. They cheered back. But then Oswald appeared and was very upset about something. Oh no, said Mr. Packet suddenly. Oswald says he's run out of paint. Luckily, Dig, Doug and Daisy knew just what to do. You look after the mayoress and leave this to us, Mr. Packet. Come along, Oswald. And while Dig went out to get some paint from the truck, Doug and Daisy took Oswald inside. The 100th tractor was behind the screen. Sharp along, just giving it one last lick of paint, said Doug, as everyone waited for the big moment. Any minute now, we're almost there, said Dig. And just when they thought it would never happen, Everybody ready, shouted Daisy. It was magnificent. No one had ever seen a spotted tractor before. <laughs> or a spotted robot. I declare this will be the best 100th tractor in the world said the mayoress. And it's all thanks to Dig, Doug and Daisy, said Mr. Packet, getting out his camera. Come along, stand beside the tractor, you three. Smile, please, he said. So they did. Friendly 